Today we're going to talk about being garden detectives and trying to figure out what we might be dealing with when we do spot an issue with some of our plants in our garden. So we're looking at these tomato plants specifically and some of it looks okay. Some looks good and healthy and perky and then some of it is looking really droopy and wilted. So we need to figure out why because figuring out what the problem is helps us determine what to do about it and how to fix it. So. Um, the first thing I started looking for was, do we have any pests? And usually if there are hornworms or things, the damage that you'll see will be different. It won't be wilting, it will be missing, <laughs> missing leaves and missing branches um, and damage to the plant physically um, that we can see from the caterpillars chewing it. And then you'll find actual caterpillars on the plant and you'll find um, their droppings, which are quite large with the hornworm. They're very big caterpillars and they leave big clues <laughs> that they were there. So I'm not seeing any of those issues going on. Some of the other things, when there's wilt, the first thing we might think of is uh, water. Are we watering enough? And these have had lots and lots of water and we have other beds just farther out and those have had the same amount of water and those plants all look great. So this is something specific over here that's going on with these. Um, shouldn't be a watering issue because everything has had the same amount of water. Some certain varieties might want more water, so that doesn't totally eliminate that possibility. It could be that this variety needs more water, um, but that's so we're unsure about that. So we'll go on to the next thing, um, try to look for more clues. And if I was worried, um, sometimes a fungal disease could be an issue. So then I'll start checking the leaves, looking for yellowing or yellow spots or brown spots, anything that might indicate a blight or some different diseases going on with this plant. It really doesn't have any of that going on either. We've got just, it looks like just wilted areas, wilted leaves and dried up crispy leaves. So um, the more we look for clues and signs, that's another thing that the other plants don't have. And a lot of our fungal issues, especially in tomato plants, come from the soil itself. So there are fungal spores in the soil, and then when it rains or when we water and the soil can splash up onto lower leaves, um, then that's how the, the fungus can reach the plant. And so you'll notice on the lower leaves, a lot of those spotting and yellowing and brown issues um, that indicate that there might be a fungal disease going on, and then it will spread upwards on the plant from there. Um, and so in the pruning video, we mentioned pruning those lower leaves, and that's one of the reasons why to get them up away from the soil so that we avoid some of those fungal spores from splashing up onto the plant and causing fungal diseases. So I'm not really seeing that going on here. There aren't yellowing or the spots like I mentioned. And again, the other plants in the other beds aren't having this issue and they all have the same soil. It was the same source. Um, they're different beds obviously, but these are all brand new beds and the soil all came from the same big pile. So you would think that, you know, again, process of elimination, if that was the issue happening here, then that might also be happening there, but it's not. So as we just keep going through these different ideas and different possibilities and looking for clues, the other thing we need to do is look outside of the bed. So it's not just here, here's the problem, but what else is around us? And I noticed that not too far away, right above us, we've got a big black walnut tree. And black walnuts have a chemical called juglones in, their, in the plant, in all parts of the plant. And tomato plants are one of the plants that are really prone to, um, they're really susceptible to the toxins from that juglone. It's not a toxin that's going to hurt us. It, it works as, it's kind of like the plant's own natural form of herbicide. So it keeps some of the competition down around it. And there are a lot of plants that are not sensitive to juglones. Tomatoes are one of the ones that are sensitive to juglones. So what I'm thinking here is that these plants, the roots underneath, since these beds, they're a little bit deep, but tomatoes have a really good root system. It's possible that they're reaching down into the soil beneath this bed because we don't have a liner at the bottom. This is open to the ground underneath these raised beds. So these tomato roots are possibly getting into the soil down underneath that level where they're close to the roots of this black walnut tree and they could be getting poisoned from that. Again, it's not a poison that's going to hurt us, but it's a toxicity to this particular plant. A lot of plants are not sensitive, again, like I said, but tomatoes are. So that really might be what's going on here and that might explain why the plants that are farther away aren't having any issues like this. So just a little bit of information about being a garden detective and the types of things to look for. And once you determine what the problem is, 
that helps us determine what the solution could be. And in this case, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot we can do about that, except maybe next time plant farther away and don't plant as close to this tree. There's really, once it has had this effect on it, there's no reversing that juglone walnut toxicity, toxicity to the plant. Um, we can't really fix it. So we just can try to support these the best we can and then don't plant tomatoes here again. Next time in this bed, we'll plant other things that are not sensitive to those juglones and we'll be totally fine.